when I finally made New York in 1972, and I was on the station that broadcast the games, I kind of did pre and post. They didn't have much of a of a radio contract. They were the, the doldrums of the Yanks and CBS. Anyway, um, and Marty was the PR director of the Yankees, when we became buddies. And then when I got back to New York to do the Yankees in 89, he was the producer of the games on Channel 11. He's written a lot of books, and boy, he's got a honey here we're going to talk about. It. And Will Rhymes, the little second baseman, a left-hand hitter, takes a strike from Nova, and we're underway. Rhymes was with Detroit. He is 5 for 17 on the year. And the 0-1, a breaking ball strike, beautiful breaking ball. Well, the, the book is called Pinstripe Empire, and it goes chronologically through every year of the Yankees from 1903 till now. And year by year, you'll hear all the inside stories. You'll find out things you never knew. Pitch, grounded, foul, and I'm, I'm told more. I think it's a, a fabulous book if you're a Yankee fan. My goodness, it's like the Bible for the Yankees. Actually, and thanks for having me on, by, uh, by the way, but uh, it's really for all baseball fans because the Yankees are so important to baseball history that you can't be a baseball fan without... Oh, two is high, one and two. Without knowing Yankee history. I have a, I have a question. Here's my... Because there are so many things in there that I, I don't know how you found them out in the first place. Yeah. But what surprised you the most? As Nova deals one, two to runs pitch outside. Um, I, I developed a much greater appreciation for Jacob Rupert, who, let's face it, he bought Babe Ruth, he built Yankee Stadium, he created the dynasty. Here is Nova's 2-2 two -two to the left-hand hitter, and the pitch is swung on, a high fly down the corner in right field, Swisher looking at it, and he makes the catch, foul territory, just about out of our view, but he reached it and made the catch, went away. And Rupert, for almost the entire time that he owned the team, first he had to go through Prohibition, and that was his income, was he owned a brewery, and that was followed by the Great Depression. So he was financially strapped through all those years, but nobody paid attention to it, least of all him. He kept putting money back into the team. Sean Rodriguez, the right-handed, is a little tapper back to the mound. Nova feels and throws. Don't worry, I know what you're thinking, Marty. The next guy's going to come and make out of one pitch. Then you'll be yes, here at the bottom yeah. of the third. Well, okay. you know, there's somebody else we know that put every penny back into the, his name. That comes a little yeah. later. I was going to say, it really set the precedent for how to properly run this business, and George Steinbrenner followed that. But while George Steinbrenner used to like to say it was like buying the Mona Lisa, Rupert was kind of da Vinci. He created it in the he first created place. It. And I had no idea he didn't have money. Neither did I. Here's Jose Molina. Cut on and missed. Well, he he did at first, but then he had Prohibition, which sapped his whole brewery income, followed by the Great Depression, where nobody was making money. Molina, a right-hand hitter, is 11 for 54, a homer 5 RBI's pitch is granted right back to Nova. The first base. Well, what happened is... The players found out Marty was going to be on there, so let's have the fastest inning possible. But we're going to continue to sell your book in the bottom half. So stay right there. Three up, three down at the end of two and a half. No score on the Yanks radio network, driven by G. A fifth. Molina grounded back to the mound. That was the 15th out of the game. And Geico reminds you that 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit them at geico.com. We're visiting... With Marty Appel, the former Yankee PR director, former producer of their telecast, who has written a phenomenal book called Pinstripe Empire. And Amazon and Barnes & Noble wants to sell one of those books to you. And I've read the book cover to cover, and it is fabulous. Any baseball fan would love it. Eduardo Nunez leads off, takes a curveball strike, and the 0-1 hit right up the middle for a base hit to center field. So Nunez has been struggling, gets a base hit. He is now 13 for 47 on the year. No homers, five RBIs. Here's my big question. How did you do all the research to find out all the things that happened in 1903 to 1920 and then 
Babe's Day and then Jody's Day at all? Oh, there's a lot of untapped resources, and the New York Public Library was great because they have all the old newspapers that are long defunct. Uh, and, of course, lots written about the Yankees over the years. But I was uh, honored uh, to work for the Yankees starting in 68, and I was smart enough to listen, and I knew history was going on around me every day. Here's Derek Jeter. There is a strike. Um, in, the, in the 30s, DeMaz joined the team in 36. In 36 and 39, they won four straight pennants, four straight World Series, and they murdered the opposition. And those teams don't get the recognition of other teams. It's true. Here's a DiMaggio thing I'll bet you don't know. From 36 to 42, he played every inning of every All-Star game. I would not have known. Wow. <laughs> well, they didn't want to come out of games then. It was an honor, and they played every inning of every game that they were in, all of them. Sure, you know, that's how Teddy yep. hit a home run in the ninth inning. Right. He, he was still in the game. Yeah, still had a game, and had broken his elbow and wouldn't come out of the game. It'll be an 0-1 to Jeter. Jeter grounded a second his first time. And Shields delivered swung on, grounded foul off third. I, I have a question. I've always, you know, we know that when Babe Ruth was sold here and that began the house that Ruth built. When that sale happened, did everybody in New York know that it was going to be that good? Did people pay attention back then? Uh, he was a big name. Everybody knew his name. But there were still a lot of people... A lot of baseball fans who loved the old style of Honus Wagner and Ty Cobb, and they thought that his style of play was not to their taste. The 0-2 line foul down the right field line out of play. A lot of remains 0-2. A lot of people defended uh, Harry Frazee's sale by saying, "This guy isn't baseball. This isn't what the game's right. about." Um, what if you could go back in time with what you found out? What would be your favorite era? Besides the one that you've lived in the last 50 years, but what would be the fav your favorite era that you could go back and live through that? Well, not that he would have, not that he would have known my name, but of course I would have loved to have traveled with Babe Ruth. He was such a magnificent character. The 0-2 tapped weakly to third. Kevin Fields throws to first in time. Nunez takes seconds, and the Yanks have a runner in scoring position with one out for Grandison. Mickey Mantle was my hero, and I did get to work here while Mickey was still an active player, and that was a tremendous thrill for me. Well, you were beat, I mean, you really did research. You were beat conversations in, in all of those years, so you get in, let's say it's 37, to match second. Well, you, you kind of live with the Yankees as they just slaughtered the opposition in those four years and um you know people talk about the 27 team and the 61 team and the 98 team well those teams are awfully good does it ever amaze you marty right now there are three men on the right side for grandison nunez at second with one out and the pitch cut on this ever amaze you that the yankees were able to get these players continually and continue to win the fact that they would just keep regenerating the roster and bringing in superstar after superstar remains amazing. But as the legend of the franchise grew, this is where good ball players wanted to play. Mm. Here's the 0-1. By the time. way, you know, they just missed the 1940 pennant, lost right, it in right. the final. Had they won in 1940, they would have had eight straight. And I, I, that, that's phenomenal. And Here's the 1-1 one, one to Grandison. Swung on, grounded weakly to first. Pena flips to Shields in time. Nunez takes third. Were you amazed at the DiMaggio numbers? Not just that they were great numbers, but he was doing it as a right-hand hitter in what was the worst ballpark ever for a right-hand hitter, Yankee Stadium. You know, he never hit a World Series home run in Yankee Stadium. All his World Series home runs are on the road. I can understand it. For those who don't know it, left center was 457. When you got around the corner on the line, it was 402. That was like straightaway left. And 457 to dead center and 461 to center field. We're not covering enough on this, but it's a, a book you will love. You can sit there and read this forever. The famous Algae on Frito catch. Yes. That would have been his only World Series home run in Yankee Stadium. And that was at the 402 foot sign. Right. Now here is A-Rod, runner at third, two out pitch, a breaking ball strike. 
and the count on one. Here's one thing I learned in the book I never knew. When Babe Ruth hit the home run in 32 in Chicago, did he call the shot or did he not? No one really knows. But anyway, he hit the home run. The Cubs and Yankees were really bench jockeying each other. The 0-1 is a strike. You know what I never knew? The next guy up was Lou Gehrig and he had a home run. <laughs> Which was the story of Lou's life, actually. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that something? Um, Barnes & Noble and Amazon. It's called Pinstripe Empire. And, by the way, you have to be strong to lift the book. The O2. Low. This isn't any flimsy book. You know, there's about 800 pages of Yankee lore. Every year, it goes chronologically. Every year, you get involved with the Yankees that year, whether they won or lost or whatever. Here's the one, too. It's low in the count, too. And, of course, every bookstore, not just Amazon and Barnes & Noble, all fine bookstores everywhere all over the country. I have a question, because I have always marveled, and we, we know what Babe Ruth did, but Garrick, who hit right behind him, how did he get all those RBIs, too? Yeah, I've never amazing. understood that. He had as, as many as 184 in one season with Ruth hitting ahead of him. The 2-2 is pop foul. You know, Susan just asked a great question. You know, you read these numbers, you can't believe it. How did he? I mean, the, the first two guys in the batting order had to be on base all the time. Exactly. Uh, Tony Lazari and Mark Koenig. And uh, the Gehrig numbers were just phenomenal. But again, he was played in Ruth's shadow the whole time. He had only one season by himself, and then DiMaggio came along. Right, right. The 2-2, two -two, swung on and pop foul out of play. I wanted to make a point about the current team, because we don't know how Robinson Cano's career is ultimately going to play out. But if he keeps going the way his career has progressed, with A-Rod, Jeter, and Cano... The 2-2, two -two, a breaking ball low... It was blocked, rolled away from Molina, but not far enough. Go ahead. With all the great Yankees and all the great teams over 110 seasons, with A-Rod, Jeter, and Cano on, in the field at the same time, you may be looking at the best Yankee at those positions ever at the same time. And you know, Rizzuto said that right away about Jeter. He said he's a much better player than I ever was. He was very nice of, of Scooter to say that. There'll be a 3-2. And the pitch is fouled at home plate. And they have a pretty good outfield, too. Uh, Ruth, DiMaggio, and Mantle. Sure. But it's amazing that those three guys playing at the same time after all these seasons might be the best ever in just, you know, one glance out there and you're seeing all three of them. Here's the payoff. Strike three in the knees. Uh, Aaron takes a call third strike. The Yankees come up empty. No runs on a hit, they leave one. Marty, thank you. We wish you all the success in the world. The book is a, I mean, I read it cover to cover. It's a fabulous book. Thanks. Thank you, John, Susan. And it's out today, by the way. Yeah, it's out today. Remember that. <laughs> no runs, one hit, one left. At the end of three, no score on the Yanks radio network, driven by Jeep. Five RBIs pitch is granted right back to Nova. To first base. Well, what happened is the players found out Marty was going to be on there, so let's have the fastest inning possible. But we're going to continue to sell your book in the bottom half. So stay right there. Three up, three down at the end of two and a half. No score on the Yanks radio network, driven by G. A fifth. Molina grounded back to the mound. That was the 15th out of the game. And Geico reminds you that 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit them at geico.com. We're visiting with Marty Appel, the former Yankee PR director, former producer of their telecast, who has written a phenomenal book called Pinstripe Empire and Amazon and Barnes & Noble. When I finally made New York in 1972, and I was on the station that broadcast the games, I kind of did pre and post. They didn't have much of a of a radio contract. Was, they were the, the doldrums of the Yanks and CBS. Anyway, um, and Marty was the PR director of the Yankees, when we became buddies. And then when I got back to New York to do the Yankees in 89, he was the producer of the games on Channel 11. He's written a lot of books, and boy, he's got a honey here we're going to talk about. And 
Will Rhymes, the little second baseman, the left-hand hitter, takes a strike from Nova, and we're underway. Rhymes was with Detroit. He is 5 for 17 on the year. And the 0-1, a breaking ball strike, beautiful breaking ball. Well, the, the book is called Pinstripe M Side. Um, I, I developed a much greater appreciation for Jacob Rupert, who, let's face it, he bought Babe Ruth, he built Yankee Stadium, he created the dynasty. Here is Nova's 2-2 two -two to the left-hand hitter. And the pitch is swung on, a high fly down the corner in right field. Swisher looking at it, and he makes the catch. Foul territory, just about out of our view, but he reached it and made the catch, one away. And Rupert, for almost the entire time that he owned the team, first he had to go through Prohibition, and that was his income, was he owned a brewery, and that was followed by the Great Depression. So he was financially strapped through all those years, but nobody paid attention to, at least of all him. He kept putting money back into the team. Sean Rodriguez, the right-handed, is a little tapper back to the mound. Nova feels and throws. 2A, don't worry. I know what you're thinking, Marty. The next guy's going to come out and make out of one pitch. Then you'll be yes, here at the bottom of the third. Well, okay. you know, there's somebody else we know that put every penny back into the, his name. That comes a little yeah. later. I was going to say, it really set the precedent for how to properly run this business, and George Steinbrenner followed that. But while George Steinbrenner used to like to say it was like buying the Mona Lisa, Rupert was kind of Da Vinci. He created it in the he first place. He created it. And I had no idea he didn't have money. Neither did I. Here's Jose Molina. Cut on and missed. Well, he, he did at first, but then he had Prohibition, which sapped his whole brewery income, followed by the Great Depression, where nobody was making money. Molina, a right-hand hitter. And fire. And it goes chronologically through every year of the Yankees from 1903 till now. And year by year, you'll hear all the inside stories. You'll find out things you never knew. Pitch, grounded, foul. And I, I'm told, more. I think it's a, a fabulous book if you're a Yankee man. My goodness. It's like the Bible for the Yankees. Actually, and thanks for having me on, by, uh, by the way. But uh, it's really for all baseball fans because the Yankees are so important to baseball history that you can't be a baseball fan without... Oh, two is high, one and two. Without knowing Yankee history. I have a, I have a question. Here's my... Because there are so many things in there that I, I don't know how you found them out in the first place. Yeah. But what surprised you the most? As Nova deals one-two to runs, pitch out 